a couple of minutes over our break. please come forward. If you'd like to speak on behalf of the request, please come forward, state your name and address. Questions, so it was about the 501c3 that we are, nonprofit, 
And uh, our recommendation or our intent is to <coughs> establish a home so these returning citizens can uh, be uh, re regrouped or rejoined with their, their families. I understand that there's a lot of concern. Uh, we understand that concern from the neighbors. Uh, and we've got a lot of pushback. But uh, again, we're here to um, present this idea before the commission. Um, and go forward with this um, plan to re-establish. Uh, and I'd like to say that uh, in the re-establishment phase of the Department of Corrections, we as the owners have an opportunity to review the um, eligible members, intended members, proposed members, to review their records and select who we'd like to live in this facility. Uh, we're not taking, uh, we're only selecting those who are first time offenders. First time in jail or in prison, I had, had to do some, some time with that. We're not selecting uh, sexual uh, predators, even though we've done research and in the neighborhood. There are seven registered sex So uh, I understand that the neighbors are concerned about the residents being uh, a threat to the neighborhood. We believe in second chances, and that's why we're here. Okay. How are you doing? Chad Bailey. I'm also a member of the fellow. Um, the criteria that we're looking for for these citizens are uh, obviously <coughs> low level, first time offenders with workable job skills coming home. Think, uh, citizens who just made uh, a want and a need to change. Either they have got education while they were uh, incarcerated, got a job still while they're incarcerated. But our goal, our mission is not to keep a full residence. Our mission is to get these guys home, find some work skills. Uh, they have already had their work skills, to find some job papers for them, and get them out the door. We provide transportation. Like I said we also provide job training, job, uh, job skills, like job, job referral. Um, Say that we're looking for low level, first time offenders, people who actually display a natural change to come home to get back into society and be tax paying citizens. Because these are your neighbors. These are guys that are fixing fix some cars, paint your houses, and in fact build some of your houses, and also own businesses themselves. But these are, these are people, redeemable people, that we're looking for. We're not looking for, like I say, people who are coming in, involving doors, things of that nature. Uh, I know some of the concerns of our neighborhood is uh, crime, uh, propensity for, for crime, but we all know that crime is rank. It can happen anywhere. It can happen in Chevy Creek, it can happen in the most the neighborhoods, like it can happen in the lower level neighborhoods. Uh, talk about, you want to hear some opposition to say about children, I'm going to discuss there are seven sex offenders in the neighborhood and one lives on that street. Uh, we're going to hear opposition is uh, to drugs being introduced in the neighborhood, fighting uh, <coughs> offenders, which are citizens. But let's be honest with you. We have a drug problem in America, period. Whether it's opioids, alcohol, or anything else of that nature. Uh, we're going to hear opposition uh, speak about property value. Uh, which is no statistical uh, proof that a halfway house it either raises property value or lowers property value. You're going to hear, um, like I say, about crime as well. Again, no statistical value, no statistical data says that a halfway house lowers crime or reduces crime. <coughs> you're going to hear about, uh, uh, well, not my, it's a good idea, but not my neighborhood. Uh, what well, would be a good neighborhood? for it to happen. Would you rather them off of Troop Street, Lee Street, you know, uh, off of an industrial area, you know, um, with the lack of transportation that's already, the city already has. We're providing transportation <coughs> to these guys, to and from work. We're also going to step in, uh, beyond what the state recommendation is, but we're offering weekly drug tests for, for the homeowners that's there. Um, I understand some of the residents 
I understand their interest, I understand their apprehension, but it's all based on signature. They're signatized. So, all, so automatically they're coming home being signatized. They have no community to come home to. So, um, like I say, so it's not that neighborhood, it's not this neighborhood where. You know, would you rather have them when they walk out their front door, by like introducing them back to the drug? Walk out the front door, uh, you know, bikes and you know, bad elements. You know, so why not put it in a, a decent neighborhood where these guys can have some hope when they step out the front door and be like, you know what, I can have this. I can have this. Now that guarantees, it guarantees nothing, right? It guarantees, you won't guarantee that a member would re, uh, you know, get re locked or reincarcerated. But it gives them a better chance than what's out there anyway right now. The, the current situation is so hard. Well, you have, it's overcrowded. Uh, these guys have lack of transportation to get to and from. So I mean, we, I see we're trying to give these guys uh, a second chance. But these are the new citizens that's going to come home. They're going to be working on fixing cars, painting houses. Put roofs on it, put, put, put in a full day for it. Right, um. Yeah, uh, before we go, <coughs> I'd like to say that uh, there are no guarantees. We can't guarantee that they're going to reoffend. Nobody can guarantee. But we can guarantee that they will be living in a place that's decent, that's structured, it's a home, it's not a traditional halfway house. There, there will be a, a manager on site to. Uh, and there are curfews. We haven't installed the cameras in all the security yet because we're running into some resistance. Uh, but I'd like to say on any given day, it, this could happen to any of us. It could be any one of you all. And I'm sure there are many families that experience the same situation that we're talking about with someone wanting to come home or have a family member that's incarcerated and can't get home. Uh, but I'd like to address this final thing Mark, in this letter, this item number six, I'm sure you all have this. Um, this draft recommendation that you have here, Mr. Mark, the final recommendation, inconsistent with the comprehensive plan and the conditional use review criteria and recommend denial to the city council. That is far from the truth. You did not deny us at all. In fact, when we met with you on the 17th of December, you encouraged us, uh, uh, us to go through with this and you even said that you... Ms. Uh, Bailey, excuse me. Um, two things. If you could address your comments to the commissioners. Okay. Uh, and then secondly, you've got about 30 seconds. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. But that, that denial is, is not true. Well, I think what... Um, this is a staff recommendation to us. This is what he is recommending to okay. us. Right. So um, maybe we can just clarify that a little bit. So you have about 20 seconds okay, left. Okay, that's fine. He recommended that to you all. Correct. But he did not recommend that to us. Okay. okay. Recommended that to us, we would not have paid the fees and gone through with this since the 17th of December. All right. This denial that you all are looking at or whatever, we got a copy of that 22nd of yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Do we have any questions for our presenters? From Yes, Commissioner Graham. The you said it's um, the ones that you did get. Do you decide who you get, or do the Department of Corrections decide who you get? We can decide, along with the Department of Corrections, once they let us know the people that are planning or uh, making an application to reside with the favorite fellows, we decide, once we look at that record, as to whether or not we want them to be a part of this shared home. You get a final say. Okay, I know you said there was a place on Gale Hollow, there's one on Troop Street, which is true. I see. Gale Hollow, yeah. I work with those who are in Yale Harbor every other Friday at the Goodwill Inn. Is that place overcrowded now? Uh, you know yes, uh, yes, Commissioner. Are you going to have a 24 hour supervision now? Yes, we have a house manager. And how many? We will have a house manager, uh, <coughs> one house manager with uh, five citizens. Uh, the house manager will be. They're 24 hours, but as you know, these guys are going to work. And when they come to work, they, come, they have to come home. 
and so the sub, the piece, the piece of the have that been that book. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And it's not the sole responsibility of the house manager. As uh, the owners of the Bell Four Group, we will be in every day. We will be in uh, to monitor the activities, to check before the curfew, and to check there in the mornings to make sure that they're out of place at seven thirty. There won't be any um, shared home members who will be allowed to just lay around all day long. That's that's not that's not part of the program. Another thing is we're asking for a 90-day opportunity. If it doesn't work out in 90 days, we'll gladly shut it down. But we can't guarantee, again, that the shared home members will not real time. If they do that between them and their probation officer. Ma'am, I understand that. Have you, have you worked with the married up with uh, the county and the state to get physicals, uh, to get this type of thing in these homes. In other words, we have a home in the middle of the block. People would not even know that this was a halfway house. And uh, with certain requirements to be in that home, to wit, a physical, to wit, Bed check. Most folks in the neighborhood don't want people coming into the neighborhood at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning because it becomes disruptive. Curfew will be at 10 o'clock. Uh, the visitors are only visit, not the visit on the weekend and they can't stay at the premises. They must stay to the resident off the premises. Uh, physical, I'm not sure what you mean by physical. Like, uh, we had, I said, at 10, everybody must be in bed by, well, not in bed, but in, in house by 10. Okay. We have prepared an entire manual operating, operating operational procedures mm -hmm. that govern the use and the terms and conditions of this house. So it's not a fly by night, and it's certainly a cash count, which is what's been thrown at us. But these are our same operations. Airline. In fact, they go above and beyond what the state. Ms. Bailey, I'm, I'm sorry, Commissioner. How many, how many people will you have in there? Five citizens and one house member. So you have a total of six. Yes. yes. All right, okay. Ms. Bailey, I'd like to ask That's a couple tough. of questions. Um, how long is the stay for these individuals? It's the the minimum is ninety days. The maximum through the Department of Corrections is six months. And if they haven't complied within the first 90 days, of course, their probation officers that we're in touch with will uh, pick it up in there because their terms and conditions based on their release, and they have met those terms and conditions, then that's a violation, and that's you know, when the probation officer does. All right, my second question, and um, I'm going to amend that out. I do actually have three questions. My second question is, will you be providing counseling or therapy to these individuals? I have, uh, I'm, I'm a social worker. Right. Um, and we will, we will be providing referral services to the agencies here in the city of Delta. All right. And then my last question is, um, you had mentioned that there were seven sex offenders that live in the neighborhood. Those sex offenders are uh, required to register. Um, is there any such database or registry for um, re-entry for these citizens who will be living in such a home? Not to my knowledge. All right, and there's no requirement for um, posting that this is such a home in the neighborhood. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions for our speaker? All right, thank you very much. Um, that did um, conclude the time that we allow for those wishing to speak on behalf, but I will allow a minute for one other speaker if there's anyone who wishes to speak on behalf of this request. And if there's not, then we will allow 10 minutes um, for those wishing to speak against the request. Is there anyone here tonight wishing to speak against this request? Please come forward, state your name and phone number, I'm sorry, your name and address, 
And do keep in mind that there are 10 minutes. Hello. My name is uh, Igor Kolba. I live at uh, 2941 Beacon Drive. Uh, Can you spell your last name for us? Kolba, K-O-L-B-A. All right, Mr. Kolba. Let's say, I mean, that's a few issues. Let's say, I mean, the lady brought up like she's, uh, it's an article to respect for people who want to check their chances, and I believe in that. So that's a, me and my wife come from humble beginnings. You know, I was born in Ukraine, in poverty. She was born in Michigan, uh, during, you know, like, all the crisis, both the grants, all the jobs. I mean, we understand second chances. And let's say, I work 60, 70 hours right now just to provide for my family. I got an uh, eight. Uh, months pregnant wife for you, you know what I mean? Like I said, beyond, like, and, you know, when I was buying a house, I was doing a lot of research to put my family in a good location to be safe. And whenever they, uh, this, they was bringing up the point, like, well, I manage it, I manage it. There's so many guidelines. I mean, they're already managing, from what I understand, two houses. I mean, like, that's a lot of stuff to keep up with. I mean, for a couple of people, and uh, like I said, not only for property, but I don't care about money. You know, I mean, money is not happiness. I care about my eight pregnant wife, my daughter that's on the way. You know, like when I was buying the house, I made sure, like me, me and her was driving. You know, like I mean, we are law-abiding citizens, and we was looking to be in a neighborhood with law-abiding citizens. I mean, yeah, there's sex offenders everywhere. There's people everywhere. But it's like this is the way everything starts. You know, there's going to be the first house, the second house, this house, I mean. Like, I work with a lot of people that told me, you know, like, uh, you've seen neighborhoods turned around from great to bad within a few years, from things like that around to happen. And it, I said, like, I believe in second chances, but the way a house is located, the way all the houses in the neighborhood are located, it's not within even the walking distance of the business. I mean, they, I mean, all the transportation we provided, this would be provided with cameras. Now they're running into issues with cameras and cameras in there. There's all these issues. And there's all these things to keep up with, and that's what it sounds like. There's only a few people to keep up with things. And why are you going to have six grown men? It's, I mean, those houses are not big. It's only 1,500 square foot house. How, I mean, from, from my house, it's a 15, you know, like, you're going to have two or three grown people in one bedroom. There's going to be couches. I mean, let's say that's plenty of, you know, like, uh, from my experience living in Valdosta, a lot of Valdosta, a lot of people here, well, like I said, there's college here, there's a lot more neighborhoods, I feel like, within the walking distance of the, you know, like, uh, to get to the place of work. There's also a lot, uh, a lot of places where, you know, like, there's a lot grown, not only family oriented, but also, like, you know, like, neighborhoods where there's a lot more grown people, like college students living there, the people, can take care of themselves more than children working to school. You know, or let's say my wife is on a, you know, like, eight month pregnant. I mean, let's say, like, I'm just, let's say, I'm not as much worried about volume in the house, let's say, I can care less about that. What I'm really worried about is, I've seen a lot of neighborhoods turn around from being great to being, you know, not so great within just a few years. And I want to provo uh, avoid as much negativity coming towards my life and my family as much as I can. Thank you. Thank you. But you don't live in the neighborhood. I do live in the neighborhood. Uh, please, uh, excuse me. Uh, any comments need to be addressed to the commissioner, please. All right, do we have someone else wishing to speak against? Come forward, state your name and address, please. My name is Stephen Beck. I live at 4022 Could you spell your last name for us, Stephen? All right. Um, my house is actually a picture of the teaching driveway. I'm right across the street from the home. There's all my buildings in. Um, I talked to Chad about this probably a year, year and a half ago. It was explained to me that this was going to be children. And I found out that this was going to be adults on the news when I saw it. Um, it is going to affect property value. And I have a 16-year-old daughter, a 17-year-old daughter, and a 21 year old daughter that don't need six released prisoners across the street from her. I'm also seeing a woman who has an 8 year old daughter, a 14 year old daughter, and a 15 year old daughter. Oh my lord. This is not a truth that they need to buy my house. And I'm moving. Um, 
they moved the family that is doing this, they moved to a 2,700 square foot home. Okay, why didn't you renovate that house to move these people in with you Amen. instead of bringing them into us? <laughs> you know, this whole neighborhood is single parents, hardworking people just trying to get, get by. And it's not fair to us to say, hey, we're going to throw six convicts in your, in your neighborhood. I have a convicted felon who works for me. I do businesses in town. I understand giving people a chance. There are plenty of places to do it. I'm not saying mine, don't do it in my neighborhood. Hey, buy a house out in the country. Sell this house. Do that. You can still drive them back and forth, but don't put them in the middle of the subdivision with a bunch of young children and people just trying to get, get going. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we have one minute left. Hi, I'm Julie Nickerson, and I see KPSON. I live at 4027 Forest Run Circle. I'm two doors down from the proposed site. One thing that hasn't been mentioned is this house is one block away from the elementary school bus pickup and drop off site. Kids walk right past this house every single day. It is a couple of blocks away from the elementary school. This is a, prim a predominantly child, <coughs> most of the have kids in, in this neighborhood. And that's of great concern to almost everyone in the neighborhood. From what I understand, about 90% of the neighborhood is very, very concerned about. So I would say that, and then I would also say there's <clears throat> some discrepancy. I think the other fellow alluded to the fact that when the application was originally made, it was not for this purpose, and it was approved for a different purpose. And then as things evolved, it came down to this, and none of us were aware of it until very recently. I, too, believe in second, third, fourth, and fifth chances, but this is not the place for it. Thank you. All right, that wraps us up for um, the uh, audience participation portion. I'll now turn it back over to the commissioners for uh, discussion. I have a question for Matt, please. Certainly. Matt, on the, on the front page of your presentation here, at the bottom, close to the bottom, the last time we considered an application for this particular property, uh, you said staff was supportive of the CUP request for personal care home. Special conditions on limited number of residents. How many residents was that? Do you remember? I think the approval was four maximum. And just one of the technical question, if I should have this already, you can tell me. Uh, on this page of the uh, conditional use review criteria, which I guess is an interview with the applicant, or, is that correct? Is it is part of the application form where the applicant responds to those questions and then staff also responds to the same questions. My question is, most of the way down, it's yes, 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 and then we get to the bottom and no, 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 no. Is that, I mean, it's just a technical question. I mean, so you were okay with the top four or five, four, I guess. But then. So you're asking us how does that justify yeah, the. No, these these are not criteria that are based on majority vote. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's, just, it's just a list of. It's like you were rolling in one direction and then. Well, when you look at the individual criteria, yeah. ingress, egress to the property, there's plenty. Mm -hmm. Adequacy of public facilities or sewer transportation drainage, mm -hmm. no issue there. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions for staff? Thank you. If there's not, I will call for a motion. Madam Chair. Mr. Let's try again. For this case, uh, CU 2020-02, conditional use permit for halfway house, I would like to recommend that we um, follow staff's recommendation and deny this request because this current use, of course, has a lot of people concerned. And uh, the fact is that this current proposed use is clearly out of line with the existing uh, surrounding land uses. So for that for those that reason I guess I would like to uh, recommend denial. All right, we have a motion for denial. Do I have a second? Yes. All right. 
Commissioner Bailey has seconded that motion. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Are they still good to go on this halfway? Not, not the halfway. Oh, yeah. That's the first one. No, that's, that's a no. past case. That was a past case that they brought before us my, yeah. early last year, right? Correct. And the copy of that certificate is in your packet that had right. an expiration date on it, which was for two years. Mm -hmm. They're about seven months into that two year period. Okay. That approval is still active. Right. Yes, that's true. Back to this. It's still open, right? Yeah. It's been, that one was approved. Yes. Okay. All right. If there is no other discussion on the motion, I'll call for the vote. All those voting in favor of the motion to deny the request, raise your right hand. All right. All those against? All right. The motion carries. Thank you. Yes. I'm sorry. That was unanimous. And again, Madam Chairman, for those in the audience, this is a recommendation. Correct. Uh, I, I, do um, want to, right. I do want to reiterate that for all of the cases. We are a recommending body only. We are not the final say. Please make sure that you attend the um, city council meeting that's going to be held Thursday, February the 6th, in which they will make a final determination. All right? Thank you. All right, moving along, uh, agenda item number 